This thing is the biggest platter that they have on the menu, $220. I kid you not, this is one of the greatest all-you-can-eat meals I've had, not just in Vegas, but anywhere in the world. Viva Las Vegas! It is the entertainment capital of the world. No wonder so many tourists flock to this city all year round. Here you'll find some of the most magnificent sights and sounds, and even some magnificent food to feast on. Hey there, this is Steve from Rockstar Eater, and in this episode, I'm going to be taking you on my epic 72-hour trip to Las Vegas. Las Vegas is quickly developing into a big food city, and what better way to go all out than to hit up the best all-you-can-eat spots in town. So I encourage you, stick all the way to the end of this video because I'm going to show you all the great places that you can eat, where to stay, and much more. And also, if you're new to this channel, take a moment right now to hit that subscribe button, as well as the notification bell because I post these food and travel videos weekly you don't want to miss out on. So go ahead, do that right now. And with that said, let's go to Las Vegas. The first stop is Rolling Smoke, which is the highest rated American barbecue restaurant in Las Vegas. This restaurant is known for its $50 all-you-can-eat barbecue menu. That's right, you can have barbecue ribs, sausages, pulled pork, and pretty much anything on the menu for 50 bucks. Not to mention these world-famous beef ribs, which alone is worth the trip. How much can you eat? So this is their menu, guys. You see they got barbecue sandwiches, uh, sliders, this outlaw burger, which I had last time. It's, it's pretty insane. I mean, it's a really big burger. And if you guys are into salads, they do have this as well. But I came for the all-you-can-eat, and look how cool it is. It's including tax. Okay, anything on the menu. Uh, this is the only thing that's limited, these world-famous beef ribs, but really, get these because it's like the best thing on the menu. See, drink included. Oh, that's pretty awesome, huh? See, take a look for yourself. Wow. Yeah, you can get all this. Yeah, including that outlaw burger if you wanted to. And they do sell out of this all the time. Fat and juicy. Yeah, I love the color too. These are the spare ribs? Okay. Right here are baby bags. And that's the baby back rib. You see, they got more than one kind of rib here. That is all the dry rub to marinate the chicken. Yeah, I think I've had this chicken at the other location. I can't really remember, but I'm pretty sure it's excellent. Oh, it's awesome. Oh, and these are the burnt ends. Very popular dish here from what I heard. Oh wow, I'm going to sample one right now as a little preview of what I'm going to experience at the table later, I guess. Wow. Delicious. Mm. I don't remember if I had this last time I was at Rolling Smoke, but I'm definitely going to eat more of it. That is the Spatastic, they call it. Their famous potato dish. It's like a loaded potato. Oh, okay, that's brisket. Yeah, any type of meat you want on it. A little sauce. The house special sauce. And that is some barbecue beans. Whoa, even cheese. That's crazy. Look at that. And that's sour cream and the finishing touches. During peak hours, when they have that all-you-can-eat thing going, they're gonna have to be cutting up a lot of this meat. Wow, looks so exciting. If you guys like barbecue, then this is a spot you gotta come to because you could order pretty much anything on the menu. Isn't that so crazy? Like anything. Oh, so if you're a meat lover, yeah, this is the spot you gotta be. Wow, I think round one, I went a little bit overboard, but I'm gonna try to get through it. So we got some cornbread right there, and this is their dirty rice. This is their collard green. And by the way, I'm showing you all the sides right now. Uh, the baked beans, which is really good. The loaded mashed potatoes, mac and cheese, which I also heard is a specialty here. My friends, this is the famous, world famous beef ribs. I could seriously drive all the way to Vegas just to eat this one. That's how good it is. So for the all you can eat, it's limited to two, but of course you can always order extra, which is what I did, uh-huh, because I gotta get my full experience here before I head back to LA. 
And they do give you these sauces on the side, which you can use. I mean, they have everything from original to Carolina vinegar. And they told me that Carolina vinegar is really the one you gotta try with the beef ribs. Oh. This is seriously the best thing about this restaurant. I mean, look how big they are. Have you ever seen beef ribs like this, especially offered in one of these all-you-can-eat oh, deals? It's crazy. Even if you come just to eat these two pieces of these beef ribs, it's gonna be so worth it. This one is their Spatastic, which is their famous loaded potatoes. Yeah, there's a lot going on in here. See, I see cheese and beans as well as uh, sour cream, a lot of meat in there, really huge potato, uh-huh. All right, so this is one I've never had before, but I'm very excited to eat it because I always loved potatoes. Oh, that's so tasty. This is really one of the best loaded potatoes I think I've had. So, so good. Yeah, if you guys like potato, you gotta like it loaded you should definitely get this one. Got a lot of these sides. See, look at that mashed potato, wow. It looks so good, look at that cheese in there. Mm -hmm. Seriously, you gotta have your potatoes with the meal. This one is so amazing, because there's cheese and there's bits of bacon in here. This is the way you make baked potato as a side. You see, this is already more than enough for one person. We got spare ribs to the left, and those are their famous burnt ends. Tried it a little earlier, it was good. Sausage links, some of that marinated chicken, which I saw them do earlier as well. And we got some pulled pork. And on this platter, we got some of their cut brisket, also very popular here. We got some more pulled pork, and that is their sweet yams. Look at that piece, look how long it is. Isn't that so cool? I love the fat that's around the side. It gives it so much flavor. Well, like I said, they have every kind of meat on the menu here. See, they even have pulled pork as well. Mm-hmm. By the way, that pulled pork would work really good in a sandwich. They do have sandwiches here, by the way, so I might get that later. Now that I thought about it, it's actually a really good idea. Wow, these yams, they taste just like candy. It's so sweet, wow. It's almost like eating fruit. I love it. Wow, that's such an awesome side too. See, I think a barbecue meal, there's an art to eating your food. Like you have to get your savory stuff, you know, the barbecue smoky stuff, and then you also need your salty foods, you need your sweet foods as well. You know, just to kind of add balance to the whole thing. That completes an American barbecue experience. These beans are filled with meat, and the sauce is so savory, it's so hearty. Mm, kind of sweet too. These are my kind of beans. Oh, and I gotta get my spare ribs as well. Here's another thing that I always have to have with my barbecue meals. Wow. That thing falls right off the bone. Okay, because I've had spare ribs before where it really, it's like you have to exert effort to take it off the bone, but this is so perfect. I love it. Wow, did I enjoy rolling smoke this much last time when I was in Vegas? I must have because it tastes so good. Wow, so cheesy, wow. I can tell they're using different kinds of cheese in here. That's so rich tasting and so creamy. By the way, what size do you usually like to get when you go to one of these barbecue restaurants? Drop that comment, love to hear your story. Mm. It has a little bit of a kick to it, but I love it. You know these hot links? Anytime you put sausages in there, it's like, yeah. That's like my meal right there. Okay, we got some vegetables here too, right? You know, you gotta keep it healthy with some uh, collard greens. Even these are fantastic. I'm telling you, everything here tastes great. These are like perfect collard greens. Vegetable tastes good. It's uh, saltiness level is about right. 
Uh, it's very savory and it does have that meaty flavor too since there are bits of meat in there. Oh, so good. And I guess I came at a good time because New Year's, it seems like they have this today, black eyed peas with smoked ham. It's something that you're supposed to eat for New Year's to bring good luck. Mm. Oh, that tastes so nice. I do taste the smokiness of the ham and it's so runny and soupy too. I love those black eyed peas. Love it, love it. And part of the tradition is to eat some cornbread with it on New Year's. Wow, so soft, just like a cake. Now these peas, I don't know if this is a regular menu item, they just happen to have it today. But um, if you're here and you're interested in trying it, it doesn't hurt to ask. Maybe they'll hook you up with some. And it looks like they do have seafood here too, which I didn't have at the other location. It's got some catfish, got some hush puppies, those balls right there. Even have some fried shrimp. Yes, gotta have my seafood fix too, right? Not just when I go to those Cajun seafood restaurants. Major props to the catfish too. That thing is soft. I love the bread coating outside too, that cornmeal mix. See if it couldn't get any more Southern, they got some hush puppies too. Mm, so fresh, crispy, soft. Wow, everything is so fantastic here. Everything from their seafood to their meats. I kid you not, this is one of the greatest all-you-can-eat meals I've had, not just in Vegas, but anywhere in the world. I mean, where else are you gonna find for $50 where you can get like two of these monstrous beef ribs, which are so excellent, and all of these briskets and ribs and chicken and all the sides and appetizers. I mean, this is really like as good as it gets for AYC barbecue. When you're here in Vegas, whether you are by the Strip or here in Summerlin, you got to come to Rolling Smoke. If you love American style barbecue, you love it all you can eat because this is really one of the most fantastic experiences you're ever gonna have. Seriously, no joke, even the sides are like A plus. Shout out to Mike here, who's the awesome manager here at Rolling Smoke in Summerlin. So tell him and the entire staff that you saw this video and he's gonna hook you up with something very special. What's that, Mike? Homemade banana pudding. All right, and that's very good by the way. So yes, come on in and give this a try along with everything else. My next stop that night is 888 Korean Barbecue, which is Yelp's highest rated all you can eat Korean barbecue restaurant. AYC Korean Barbecue is a thing in Las Vegas, and 888 is probably your best bet for delicious, high quality meats. I mean, it has to be, right? Why else would the line be six hours at times? So this restaurant does open every day, all day it looks like. It starts at $25.95. That's actually pretty reasonably priced. You see, you get these appetizers and then you can get all this awesome stuff down here. But then you can go up another level, Prime, $31.95. More appetizers, see, even like sashimi. Wow, that's so awesome. And then you get premium items. I'm gonna get some of this, obviously. But then, if you wanna go all out, Kobe style for $42.95. Yeah, this is the one I'm gonna go with because you're gonna get the best selections here. Even during a weekday in the afternoon, it is pretty packed in here. So you know, this is a hot spot. They've been around for a little over five years and I have been to the sister restaurant in Vegas called 888 Japanese Barbecue. But if you're more into the Korean barbecue, then you gotta come to this spot. And I heard that they have some pretty nice premium cuts of meat, especially if you go with the top tier selection. Okay, now this is pretty interesting. So this is a non-stick metal grill. They're not gonna change or replace the grills for you. So whenever it gets dirty, they use this piece of radish on a chopstick and then they would uh, scrub it off. Oh wow, look, they even have the sundubu here too. Wow, this is so big. i never seen that before. So here we go with round number one. We got the Kobe beef belly. Look at that, I love the marbling, very good quality. And then this one is the Kobe beef brisket. This is always a good way to start. And then that one, we got Kobe short ribs, very nice. And that one is the miso hanging tender, which is a form of steak. I don't know if I've had it before, but it looks really good. And that one is the marinated karbi, which is boneless short ribs. 
And down here we got garlic hanging tender steak. So if you like a garlic flavor, this is the one. And that one is marinated finger meat. Oh, and before I forget, also some veggies like corn, zucchini, onions, and mushrooms. And if you guys like appetizer, they got it here as well. See, they got some fried dumplings like gyoza. And that is their tempura. And then we got some fried wontons, as well as the snow crab. And then that seaweed salad. And some cold tofu, which looks amazing. Some adamami. And then we got some of this salmon poke. Oh yeah, they got like sashimi here too. As well as some corn cheese and some soba noodles. Look at that, it is already boiling. Okay, maybe I'll try some since it looks like it's kind of done. Magnificent. Wow. That's like a really bonafide sundavu right there. A little spicy too, kind of has a kick to it, but so delicious. And these are the dipping sauces. We got the ponzu sauce to the left, and then the right is the sweet sauce, along with the samjang bean paste to eat with your uh, Korean barbecue. Got some, let's see, garlic, jalapeno, and this one is the sesame oil with salt and pepper. First one ready is the Kobe brisket. Yeah, with some of that ponzu sauce. Wow, so rich. It definitely has like a very beefy flavor. It has like a chew to it, but it's so rich tasting and so buttery. I mean, that's why, you know, it's Kobe, right? Yeah, American Kobe beef, because it's supposed to be a higher grade of meat. And this is one of the things you're gonna notice about this restaurant is they use a lot of high grade selections. That's why it's always so busy, even in the afternoon time. Beef belly, my favorite to eat at All You Can Eats as well. Wow, so good. Very soft, very tender. Also has like a good rich flavor as well. All right, for sure. Definitely the beef belly brisket. Can't go wrong with it. Yes, let's put some vegetables on too. That sounds like a really good idea. Can't have all meat, right? And maybe while I wait for the meat to cook, gonna try some of the appetizers like this one. Wow, so strong. Wow, that tastes pretty fresh. It's just like out of a sushi restaurant. So this is a salmon poke. Kind of creamy. I love the onions inside as well. Kobe short rib with the sesame oil. Let's change it up a little bit. Mm. Oh, yeah. Can totally taste the difference. Almost like pillow soft. That's always a good thing. Yeah, and I'm into short ribs. So yeah, you should definitely get it because short ribs is like the essence of Korean barbecue. Since this hanger steak is already marinated, why don't I try it by itself? Whoa. Hmm. I like that one. It's uh, miso marinated, so it has like that sweet miso flavor, which I think is pretty good. Oh, so, so far I think that's, that might actually be my favorite one so far, wow. You cannot forget about your veggies, right? Mm. I think those are oyster mushrooms. Wow, it tastes so good. Now you gotta cook it all the way through, then they really taste like mushrooms. Like it's so soft. Whenever you hear the word soft being used, that means it's good. Oh yeah, we got marinated carby, here we go. Okay, while I wait for that to cook up, gonna try some tofu, that looks good. I can already tell you, you gotta get this tofu when you come here. Very refreshing, there's like some sort of a house sauce inside of it. Got some seaweed, like the nori. So excellent. They had something like this at 888 Japanese Barbecue too, so that's why I'm so glad I found it here. Looks like the Korean karbi is done. Yes, let's see how theirs tastes like. Dude, it's like everything is softier. Okay. 
That one is marinated too. Kind of has like a sweet soy saucy flavor. It's good. I mean, it's like really good solid carby. Of course, I cannot say that the all you can eat tastes like if you were going to go to those really nice a la carte Korean barbecue restaurants, just like the ones I've been to in Koreatown, LA. But for all you can eat, it's definitely, it's tasty. All right, let's try garlic flavored hanging tender. Garlic makes any red meat taste good. No complaints. Just depends whether you like a miso or garlic. Hmm. I think me personally, maybe miso, but hey, garlic you can't go wrong with. Kobe finger meat as well. Uh huh. It's always so high when it comes off the grill. Hmm. It's good though. This one I think has more of like a chew to it. So not like very tender, but a very good food though. Okay, this one is pretty crazy too. This is their eight pork sampler. They have it here at this restaurant. So we got the regular pork belly, red wine, garlic. Ooh, even green tea, that's cool. Sweet soy and curry along with miso and gochujang. Oh yeah, have at it. The pork takes a while to cook, so while I'm waiting for that, I'm gonna try other appetizers, like snow crab. I think that's yuzu flavored. So they do have something that resembles sushi here. So if you guys are into seafood, he got some options here, very good. Looks like it's just about done. Yeah, look at that gochujang flavor one. Mm. Just like gochujang, mmm. Like kind of spicy and sweet. But then if you add some kimchi to it, it's gonna taste even better. This is just a tip for you guys. Very hot. Hot, hot, hot. Oh, miso one's very good. And I expect nothing less of the sweet soy. Tastes just like soy sauce, but Kind of sweet. But this one I don't think I've had before in other Korean barbecue restaurants, the green tea flavor. So the green tea one is a little bit less intense than the other flavor. So you taste more of that kind of like bitter, earthy flavor. You know what matcha tastes like, right? But it's really cool eating all of these pork belly flavors because you can sample pork belly so many ways. So here's something that comes at the end. You could get these marshmallows, which you toast, just like at a campfire site. And then it goes right in there, between those crackers and a piece of chocolate, it looks like. You make a, like a marshmallow sandwich. So I heard that at times, the line can be five to six hours. Wow, that's like a worst case scenario. So you know, this is a very popular Korean barbecue spot. It's very highly rated. And I think for the most part, yeah, it's it's definitely worth the hype. It's very good. So yeah, if you guys are looking for a Korean barbecue, all you can eat, then I guess this is the spot. Well, the day is pretty much done. And now it is time to check into my hotel at Plaza, which is located in downtown Las Vegas. So if you're planning to stay in the downtown area, then Plaza Hotel is definitely one worth considering. And here is my room at Plaza Hotel. Wow. If you guys are wondering, this is a suite. Yes, oh yeah. This is the living room area. You got your chairs and sofa right there. Wow, look at this view. You can see that plaza right outside and that is Circa Hotel, brand new hotel. Uh-huh, Fremont Street is down there. Ooh, you got a bathroom in here. That's pretty nice, state-of-the-art sink. Toilet is right there. And then out here we got a uh, Oh, sink. Oh, very nice. Okay, we got a sink down there. And then got some water in here, complimentary water. That's pretty cool. And when you come into this side, oh, wow. And this is where the bedroom is at. This is like a king size bed right there. That's awesome, awesome. And then that side, uh, let's see, TV right there. Nice clothes drawer. 
Oh, this is the bathroom. Yeah, that's my sink right there. And some towels. And then here is the restroom. All right, nice bathtub, everything. It's certainly a good option. It's next to Fremont Street. They got some nice restaurants downstairs, which I've been to before. They got a suite like this, which is pretty awesome. Gonna have a fun time staying here today and uh, probably will look very good during the daytime. So uh, yeah, I'm going to just get some rest tonight and then on to my next food adventure tomorrow. In the city of Henderson, there is a Filipino restaurant called Pinoy 1968 that serves all-you-can-eat Filipino buffet for $17.99. It is one of few Filipino buffets you'll find in Nevada. But one thing is for sure, it is very affordable and as I will discover, it is a pretty tasty buffet. Hi guys, so this is Ed. He's part of the staff here at Pinoy 1968. He's gonna to explain to us everything that's at the buffet line. Okay, Ed, what do we have here? We have here uh, pancit. It's uh, noodles from the Philippines. It's uh, made out of soyses and some of those uh, vegetables and meat. Yep, I've had that before. Yes, and this one is dinuguan. We call it here uh, pork blood stew. Sinigang is a sour uh, soup. It is pork belly, pork ribs, and some vegetables. And then? This one is the local peanut bit. These are made out of uh, squash, string beans, and uh, some meat right there, pork meat. And sometimes we add some shrimps. Beef steak is uh, marinated with choices and uh, with, with calamansi and then with onions. This one is the famous sisig. It's on our uh, roasted uh, pork face and then chop and then add some seasoning, onions and garlics and uh, green bell peppers and you can spice it up. Fried banana, saba, we call it pritong saging. What we have here is mung beans. It's, we call it mungo, mungo soup. It's, they have some bitter melon and pork and shrimp as a eggplant and and fried egg all right very simple right yes sinigang na salmon you know it's a sour soup with salmon head right there Okay, so it's like the other one, but this one yes, is just... but this one is fish. Okay, yeah. got it. All right. And these are the Filipino sausage. They call it longanisa. Yes. Yeah, Filipino sausage. And this one is bulalo. These are softened uh, soup, uh, pork knuckle. Ooh. And really, really good. Okay, haven't had that one before. Yep. And the famous egg roll, lumpia. Yes. You can have it in sweet and sour sauce or ketchup. And we have here menudo. These are pork stew. It was uh, boiled with tomato sauce and added tomato, bell pepper, potato, carrots, kilawin. It's a local kilawin dish. This is a radish and pork. Spicy and uh, sweet and salty. Uh, we got the plain white rice, steam, and the other one is garlic fried rice. Dried jeprox. They call it jeprox. It's fried fish. It's it's uh, dying. It's it's dried. Oh yes. But it's crispy and crunchy, and good with fried rice. Oh okay. Good tip. And this is apples. Yeah, apples is a uh, red delicious apple. All right, I guess that's kind of the dessert then. And if you guys decide you don't want to go all out with the Filipino buffet, they do sell it by the items too, like one item with rice or pancit, that's how much it is, or you can do two items with rice, $9.99 plus tax. All right, so here we got some drinks you can order separately, right? Yes, this is pineapple juice. Mm hmm And this one is a go gulaman. What's that? It's made out of uh, jelly and tapioca balls, four season uh, juice. These are made out of kiwi, guava, strawberry, and pineapple. 
Okay, and this drink is an extra $2? Extra $2 for the drink. So how it works is you pay first, and then the buffet line starts here is where you get all your plates, all your bowls. It looks like they have the uh, styrofoam ones. And then they have your silverware here, and if you're gonna get drinks, cup. And by the way, this is a pretty cool little setting. I almost feel like I'm in a very casual, almost like a fast food restaurant. Very homey though, and the food itself definitely looks like the ones I've had when I was in Vegas, those Filipino buffets. Oh yeah, that's a sinigang right there. It's a sour soup. You definitely taste the sourness to it. The sinigang, you know the sourness, I think in the beginning it kind of takes getting used to because it's so sour. It's like a really big punch to your face. But once you can really get into it, it's actually quite enjoyable. I mean, yes, I do love foods that have kind of like that sour burst of flavor. If done right. The Kila win, I'm not sure if I've had before. It's kind of new to me. Radish, pork. Ooh, flavorful. Kind of sweet. It definitely has like a very home style taste, I would say. But yeah, for sure, Kila win, you gotta get that one. Such a feel good dish. But then again, I cannot say no to Menudo as well. I would say that one is kind of sweeter with a little bit more of like a tomato sauce flavor, which I like. I mean, I'm really into that. By the way, it's about 11 o'clock right now. So this is kind of like my brunch right here. I believe the menu changes throughout the day depending on whether you come for breakfast or lunch or dinner. So the items that I show you here might not be the exact same items, but for the most part, I think this is it. One bite. So this one, it seems like there's pork and shrimp in here. I love egg rolls. I mean, I don't eat it all the time, but when I find it, Filipino, Chinese, you name it, I'm, I'm getting it. Okay, this is the one I should have started out with first, actually, the garlic rice. I mean, how could I not have started with this one? Wow, really solid garlic rice. I mean, how could you go wrong with it? Every Filipino restaurant I've been to, buffet or non-buffet, garlic rice, it's always like a go-to food. I mean, of course, every buffet, you're gonna find something a little different, every Filipino buffet. But for the most part, it has a very similar taste, which is good. Longanisa. Had this many, many times. It's basically like sweet sausage. Almost like the Chinese version, but just a little peppery. Hey, I mean, for $17.99, it's actually a very good deal. Well, since this is a buffet, obviously I get round number two. Yeah, those are the breakfast items for sure. Oh yeah, mung bean time. Oh yeah, I see all that pork inside. This looks like an awesome dish. The great thing about this buffet is that it's pretty much all day. Doesn't matter what time of the day you come, the buffet's always gonna be here for $17.99 and the selections differ all the time. So you're gonna see new things during the course of the day. Isn't that pretty exciting? Oh yeah. Man, how could you not like steak, right? This thing is actually very tender. I mean, it really rips right off, so, so soft. But then I see my eggplant down there. This is something I always have to get, no matter where I go. The eggplant just melts in your mouth. It's kind of crispy and toasty on top, but inside, wow, soft as pudding. That's like your ideal Asian eggplant right there. And what about that seasick pork? Mmm, so crispy. It's like soft and crispy. Bite sizes, cube size. Mmm, kind of sour too. I wonder if that's the taste of it or if it's just the other sauces I've kind of blended in. I don't know, but regardless, I love pork. Especially if it has that crispiness on top. This one looks like it's mixed with a lot of onions. Okay, now that's an item I feel like I could come here just to eat that one. Okay, and I think I've had this one before, the mango. Oh, that one's pretty good. <laughs> Especially if you love beans, like mung beans, you're really gonna like that one. See, whenever you see like squash like this as well, it's like, yeah, you gotta get it. You gotta get some of that sweetness, right? Yep. See, it's not just all about saltiness. 
There's also sweet items too. Really good balance. And the thing with Filipino foods, especially at the buffets, is that you're not gonna find anything that's really that spicy. So if you like a little bit more mild, then this is definitely perfect for you. Wow, that thing just really melts in your mouth. Always good to eat, like all the time. I don't think I've ever had one like really lousy fried banana. Very good. This is a new item that just came out, the lechon koala, you see? They are bringing out new items that you don't see originally the first time around. Oh yeah, I'm definitely gonna get this crispy pork. Even if you're kind of full, you're not going to leave here without trying the lechon koali, their famous crispy pork that's supposed to be very soft inside too, with that sauce on it, of course. Mmm. Okay, probably my favorite thing here so far, wow. Very soft inside, very crispy outside. You could go to Filipino restaurants just to eat this one. Wow, maybe I should have came a little bit later, right? So I can have more appetite to eat this one, uh-huh. This is not part of the all-you-can-eat buffet, but for $7.99, you can get a halo-halo. Yes, popular Filipino dessert. It looks like they put ube ice cream on top, a lot of beans, a lot of ice with condensed milk in the bottom. Have you guys had a halo-halo before? If you have, drop that comment. I would love to hear what you guys think about it. Wow, ube ice cream is always so good. So with this dessert, it's kind of hard to eat in the beginning because it's so you know icy, so frozen, so you really have to dig into it. But once it starts melting, you really have to get to it because it's just gonna drip all over the place. So just letting you know. Betty, awesome staff here at this restaurant. So tell her or anybody working here that you saw this video and she's gonna hook you up with a free drink. Is that right? Yeah, come on in. All right. <laughs> If you are planning to come to downtown Las Vegas, this is the spot you gotta be, which is on Main Street and Fremont. So right across is where I'm staying, that's the Plaza Hotel. But then in this direction, this is where you have the Fremont Street. Very big attraction, especially at nighttime. You're gonna see all these lights. It's really so exciting to walk on. Even if you come a little bit north of Fremont Street, you're gonna see these pretty historic hotels. Like we got the California Casino and Hotel across the street from me. And then right over here, Main Street Hotel. And I heard they got a pretty awesome buffet here. So I know a lot of people like to go to the Strip to sightsee, which is perfectly okay. But if you want a taste of really old school Las Vegas, like 50, 60 years ago, then downtown Vegas is certainly a place to experience it on Main Street. You see a lot of vintage history here. My dinner spot is one that most anyone would be most looking forward to, Scotch 80 Prime. It is an upscale steakhouse located in Palms Casino and Resort. And from what I heard, it is one of the best and even most expensive steakhouses in Las Vegas, considering their most expensive dish on the menu is $680. Now this should be pretty interesting. Anytime I see a steakhouse menu, it's like, wow. I'm always so wowed. I mean, you see the seafood selection they have at the raw bar, amazing. And they do have some pretty nice appetizers here from what I heard, like their crab cakes and their Wagyu empanada. But then if you're not into steaks, they do have other options such as seafood, you know, salmon, prawn, uh, chicken, lamb shank. Okay, so here's the main attraction. See, wood fired grill prime cut steaks. That's how they make their steaks here. You can get all your traditional cuts of different sizes. You see, you can even go to $180 for that big long bone ribeye. But then check this out, $680 A5 Kraft Wagyu flight. Have you ever seen anything like that before? Do you think I should get it? <laughs> all right guys, so this is Chef Marty. He's gonna show us all the exciting stuff here at Scotch 80 Kitchen. All right, so we have our flaming shellfish tower. We're gonna flambe it with oh. a little bit of cognac and 151. That is insane. So this is like a flambe seafood, right? Yes. A little bit of um, herb garlic butter on top to finish it off. Main lobster. We have king crab, oishi shrimp, two varieties of oysters, one west and one east, and a uh, little bay scallops. And if you guys like your butter, they have extra butter here. I mean, there's already butter on this thing, but if you want more, then knock yourself out. 
Wow, this appetizer looks super impressive. What do we have here? So we have A5 Wagyu Bites. Uh, this one's particularly from uh, Shiga Prefecture, Omi Beef. We have truffle bomb in the middle of it and topped with Ocetra caviar. Your hands will get dirty for the seafood, so it's a good thing they have these mini towels. That's very helpful. Wow, it's like all these hot stones in the bottom. Now that is pretty fancy. I don't think I've had a dish like this before. See, already off to such a great start at this fine dining restaurant. You have everything from the oysters to the shrimp here. Oh man, charbroiled, you taste it. You smell it and you taste it on your tongue. That is pretty good, pretty good. You know what, I'm even excited to try the shrimp too. So crunchy. It tastes just like steakhouse seafood. You know what I'm talking about? Like when you taste that flavor, it's like, yeah, I know I'm in a steakhouse in contrast to like a seafood restaurant by the pier or something like that. But look at this, they even have the Alaskan King crabs. I think you're supposed to use the fork in a restaurant like this, but I'm just gonna use my fingers. You see, all into the butter, just like that. That is like the ultimate way to eat Alaskan king crab. And by the way, I don't eat Alaskan king crab that often because it's so expensive. So that is why I'm pretty ecstatic eating this tonight. And it is as good as it could possibly get. Mm-hmm, loaded up with all that butter, you know, even possibly, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, but you know, it's good butter, very good. There's also the lobster. Oh yeah, look at this thing. That looks pretty awesome, huh? That is as good as lobster can get. Wow, it's like so fresh. I feel that if I came just to eat the seafood platter, I'd be very happy here. Yeah, their seafood platter is amazing. All right, now this one I'm so curious to try. How is this one gonna taste like? Wow, high quality beef at its absolute best. And then you put the caviar on top, you know, to give it that very rich million dollar taste. I mean, there's gold flakes on it. This right here is like millionaire's appetizer. They don't play around at the steakhouse. It's like even their appetizers really is like on another level. This is so amazing. All right, so we got more appetizers. So chef, what do we got here? All right, so our next course, we have rainbow tiradito. Uh, it's three different types of fish. You have uh, salmon, you have bluefin tuna and hamachi. They're all combo cured. We have a little bit of jackfruit, leche de tigre, and pickled papayas with it. And off to the other side over here, we have our snow beef, uh, wagyu empanadas. So it's 100% snow beef um, with uh, a tomato-based sauce inside. There's also peas and carrots and potatoes. Uh, homemade uh, pastry um, and then over here is another one of our signature appetizers it's our smoked bone marrow with beef cheek jam right on top of it uh, toasted brioche we also have some pickled mustard seeds and pickled red onion now this one looks pretty crazy so you're supposed to assemble it by putting the hamachi on top Fruity, spicy, sweet, all at the same time. Crunchy, soft, totally works. It's like your most elevated salmon, hamachi, dip dish ever. And I can tell you already, this is the most fancy, fanciest empanadas you're ever gonna eat anywhere in Vegas. If there's such thing as a millionaire's empanada, this is it right here. You know, you find it in a lot of casual eat restaurants. Has just been elevated with this. Crust is so crispy. Okay. Easily one of the best empanadas I've ever had. Simply for the fact that there's A5 in it. I mean, where are you gonna find empanadas like that? That's pretty insane, right? So this one looks like it's pretty simple. So you just assemble it by putting all the bone marrow on top. Oh, it's so good. This dish tastes like something out of, almost like out of a Texas barbecue restaurant. The beef cheek itself is so tender, it's smoky. 
really one of the top bone marrow dishes that I've ever had. I mean, almost everything here, like top ever had, I would say. <laughs> so I guess before we go into the kitchen, we're gonna tour the wine room. You see this right when you this come way. in. Lots and lots of delicious juice. Yes. Right here. Over here, a lot of Camus, Opus One. Of course, uh, the Ward of Excellence from uh, Wine Spectator, two glass. And we are one of three restaurants in Las Vegas that is uh, authorized to carry certified Kobe beef from Hyogo Prefecture. And you guys also have Wagyu beef here too, right? Yes, we have four other varieties and this one is a certificate from Chateau Yune, uh, Hokkaido snow beef. So we have a custom made grill from JNR. Um, we have mesquite wood and mesquite charcoal along with apricot wood that we use to cook with. Uh, right now we have your A5 uh, Wagyu searing and cooking and uh, tomahawk steak from uh, Creekstone Farms. All our steaks are pre-treated. We sous vide all of them before, uh, before actually grilling. It ensures a uh, nice uniform cooking and uh, tenderness. All right, and on it goes. And you said this grill costs about $20,000? About $20,000, it's a custom made grill uh, for us. Fresh wasabi is very expensive, only available uh, from Japan, so it's about 100 bucks a pound. Oh, that's crazy. I didn't know they were that expensive. Mm -hmm. so this is Kobe. Kobe. Omi. Olive beef and snow beef. Omi beef from Shiga Prefecture. Omi so, beef? Mm -hmm. uh, very unique fact about the region is it was the uh, region where Japan first, uh, um, where they had the unification of the country. Ah, interesting. So all the shoguns and, and uh, the warriors of that time, samurais, that's mm -hmm. the beef that they ate. Oh, okay. Four different, um, four different types from four different regions. So you can get your very affordable steaks, you know, like what you'll find in most steakhouses, but then you could go all out and go with like $600 Japanese Wagyu steak. I mean, where are you gonna find anything like that? All right, so we're starting off with some sauces. What do we got here? So here we like to serve our steaks with uh, Scotch 80 steak sauce. And we have our homemade chimichurri. And then our this. cognac uh, and peppercorn cream sauce. And that one is our red wine sauce. Kobe from Hyogo. We have Omi from Shiga. Olive from Kagawa. And then last but not least, we have our snow beef from Hokkaido. Oh, crazy. So this is like your big dish here, right? Mm -hmm. So this is your tomahawk, right? Yes. Okay, so this isn't Japanese, it's American, this right? This one is American, but only, you know, we only serve uh, the best from Creekstone Farms. It's prime, it's uh, dry age, 35 day minimum. So we have lobster fried rice with Chinese sausage and a fried egg. That's our grilled cream corn with jalapenos and bacon, and a nice simple hash brown topped off with a cheese sauce. Since this is a $680 dish, I'm gonna take every moment to enjoy this thing. Wow, is that even beef? That thing is like eating very soft, crispy fat in your mouth. I can already tell, that's as good as beef can get. Seriously, this tastes like grilled butter. Yeah, this is probably the only time, or maybe in a long time, that I'm going to have any A5 from special regions of Japan like this. So you even got like this olive beef, which I never had before too. Oh, I could taste that oiliness. The fattiness, mmm. This is like the best beef I've ever had. Oh man, okay. Maybe I should move to Japan just to eat beef like this, right? Oh yeah. I think that's my favorite one. 
how can I describe the difference between all of them? I mean, they're all rich tasting. They're as like oily fattiness, crispy on top. Truly once in a lifetime. Not as expensive, $180. But then again, how often do you pay $180 to eat a meal, right? This is like a steak that you would find in a lot of steak houses around Las Vegas. See, look how fun it is. That's the bone. Tomahawk steak. Mm-hmm. And I cooked mine about medium rare, which is really good. See, you gotta have your steak knife. That's when you know it's going down. Mmm, delicious. So of course it tastes different from the Japanese one. This one has a little bit more of a chew to it, but still very high quality. It's not cooked in the steak oven. So this one is grilled, wood fire, also charcoal as well. So it has like a very earthy, smoky taste to it, which I think it really elevates this thing. So now I'm gonna try the rib cap section, which I think is gonna be really good. I was right. It's almost like eating filet mignon. It's so tender. I mean, not as melt in your mouth as the Japanese A5, but still, it's so good. See, even the sides are so interesting too. Have you seen a corn dish like this one before? Mmm. Wow, jalapeno flavored. Okay, I like a little kick to it. A very interesting way of making cream corn in a American steakhouse. But then, did you see this? The hash browns? Oh, I never thought I'd see this here. Mm. I feel like I'm eating breakfast now. See, it's almost like a breakfast because you got your hash browns, you got your steak right here. All we need is some eggs. Oh, wait. Yeah, there's eggs right here. Oh, look at that. This is a breakfast meal right here. Breakfast for dinner. Super elevated. Mm. So that's like fried rice. You know, kind of like a Chinese style fried rice, but their version of it. Kind of a filler food, I would say, but if you guys really like fried rice and you want to try a new kind of a side dish in a fancy steakhouse, yeah, that's the one you got to get. Oh, the lo desserts look spectacular too. All right. So we're um, going to Flambe, the chocolate sphere. So this is our s'more dessert. Okay. Okay. Oh, okay. So what was this called again? This is a fireball s'more. Fireball s'more? Mm-hmm. Oh. Woo. That is pretty crazy. Look at that, guys. Okay. So it melts down. You have a graham cookie inside and you have a flourless uh, chocolate cake. You have a graham cracker ice cream with it. Graham cracker ice cream? Mm-hmm. And also some toasted marshmallows. Oh, all right. Our pineapple bass cake with uh, chantilly cream, dulce de leche. The chocolate s'mores are so rich looking. You know, I do taste that flambe alcohol that's in there, but the chocolate itself is like chocolate on steroids. So rich tasting. But then even this one, the graham cracker ice cream is supposed to be good from what I heard. Tastes so good in its own way. So the top, you taste like that graham cracker. Very fine crackers on top. Ice cream, really awesome too. Mm. Yeah, so if you guys like cake, this is the one you definitely need to get. Very cakey, especially if you love that pineapple flavor. I do warn you, this is not a cheap eats restaurant and I think you could probably tell by now. So this is not one of those places that you would come every week unless you're a millionaire, but uh, for a special occasion like anniversary, something very special, this is a spot you definitely need to check out in Las Vegas. So remember that, Scotch 80 Prime at this hotel called Palms Casino. So when you come to this restaurant, tell him or the staff that you saw this video and he's gonna hook you up with something very special. What is that, chef? So when you've come to visit and ask for me and mention um, our little segment here at uh, Rockstar Eater, I will make you something special. Mmm, oh yeah. <laughs> yes, come because everything here is so delightful. Day three begins with the biggest meal thus far in my Las Vegas food tour. This is the food hall called Eat Your Heart Out, located in the new Durango Casino and Resort. 
Many people say this food hall has some of the best food you'll find in any food court in Vegas. Everything from burgers to gourmet sushi. About a dozen shops to choose from, so let's see how many I can hit up. Irv's Burger. Interestingly, they do have one in Los Angeles as well. I've never had it before, so this is actually gonna be my first time having Irv's Burger here in Vegas. I guess you can kind of tell burgers are their specialty here. I've never been here before, but I think that's the one everybody gets, the Irv's original roadside burger, which you can make into a double. Oh yeah, I'm gonna do that. Or you can do something like a combo, which is always good because you get like fries and drinks. So if you come from 7-Eleven, they do have this breakfast section. They have burritos and these sandwiches. So yes, if you are here early, take advantage of their popular breakfast foods. It looks like they are pressing the patty. So it's almost like a smash burger. Almost. Yeah, scrape it off. Oh yeah. Now that looks like a burger. And that is the pastrami, one of their popular dishes here, the pastrami sandwich. Serves has been around since 1946, a very long standing operation. And now they have one here in Las Vegas. And since this is a gourmet food hall, everything is made to order. So it's gonna be extremely fresh and hopefully very tasty. So these are the first two that I'm starting off with. This is their famous Irv's Original Roadside Burger. You can get a single for $8 or double for $11.25. So yeah, that patty is kind of smashed or more like pressed. It has a toasted bun, Irv's sauce, lettuce, tomato, onion, and pickles. Okay, I heard a lot of good things about this one, the pastrami, so I had to try it. It's their pastrami that's been grilled. It smells wonderful. And inside there's pickle, the Zab's hot honey mustard, sounds awesome, and uh, toasted rye bread. Usually people get it with cheese on the burger, but I'm a little bit more of a hamburger type of person, so I decided to just kind of stick with what I enjoy for today. But totally get cheese because everybody pretty much does it here. I love that patty, it's it's kind of thin, but still it's so juicy, has really good flavor. You know, the salt, pepper on here, amazing. And there is tomato and lettuce in here. So you see, this is really like your all-American burger. So once again, Irv's is a very popular spot, especially back in LA. So if you see it here, yeah, you definitely need to go, especially if you love burgers. Oh wow, everything about this pastrami is so good. Like the pastrami itself is so nice and crispy and full of flavor. The rye bread is so perfect too. Hot honey mustard, that's always like the perfect accompaniment to the pastrami. Lots of pickles to make it sour. So this in many ways is also a very classic pastrami taste. Oh yeah, I mean not quite like Pat's pastrami, but I love the toasted rye bread. I think this is pretty cool. I don't know which is better, this one or the burger. Maybe kind of going overboard on the first spot, but I also heard that their Irv's hot dog is pretty good as well. And I heard that their orange creamsicle is pretty good as well. So this is uh, orange soda with uh, vanilla soft serve, I believe. You can always add more if you run out of that orange soda. Wow, this is almost like an orange soda milkshake. Oh, okay. All right, all right. It's kind of like a palate cleanser, so I can eat my hot dog now, nice savory hot dog. Really tasty Hebrew National Dog, which is always a good brand. But I think this is uh, one of the few times I had it where the bun is toasted like this, which I think is great because anytime anything is toasted, the crispiness of it, it makes it taste so much better. Okay, so far off to a good start. Even if I ended here, I'd be so happy, but I got more to go to, so I'm gonna finish up here and gonna head to my next spot. So you know what I feel like eating right now also is Prince Street Pizza. This is also another popular pizza spot that opened up here in Vegas, and they do have one in LA too, but just like Irv's Burger, I've never had Prince Street too, so this is my first time in Vegas. 
I heard that a lot of people get the spicy spring. Yes, I think I'm gonna go with that. He can do slices or he can do like the whole pie. Yes, I'm gonna do the whole pie because I wanna see what it looks like. And then uh, meat lovers, I don't think you go wrong with that. A lot of people love that. And there's also the four cheese. Okay, if you love cheese, that's the one to get. Looks like they got some desserts too. Flourless chocolate cake, New York cheesecake. Ooh, made in Italy. Like I said, you can get the pizza by the slices. And the reason why they are rectangular is that this is Sicilian style pizza. Yeah, like real Sicilian style pizza from New York. But then they also have this other kind of like a Neapolitan shape. More of your like very well-known New York style pizza, the big cheese slices. So the spicy spring starts out with the dough and the... Sliced mozzarella. Sliced mozzarella, okay. We use a Fra Diablo spicy marinara sauce. Spicy marinara sauce. Lots of pepperoni, yo, oh, wow. Yeah, it it's really covering it up. I don't think I've had a pizza with so much pepperoni in my life. There it goes. They make everything fresh. The dough is made fresh every day. They cut the pepperoni sausages fresh every day. Even the sausage, which are pasta sauces, fresh every day. So nothing comes out of can, nothing like that. So you see, even in a food hall, food court, you're gonna be getting some very high quality stuff. Super impressive. All right, that is my pizza. Look how nice it looks. Oh yeah, so this one to the left, that is the, for the cheese lover. So this one is the four cheese. Yeah, so we got mozzarella, shredded, fresh ricotta, pecorino romano, fresh garlic. And then this one I think is what made them famous, the spicy spring. So this is the whole pie and uh, it has pepperoni, uh, diavolo sauce, fresh mozzarella and pecorino romano. Look at all those pepperonis on top. So this is not the only Prince Street Pizza location. They have other ones all around, like seven in California and there's more opening. So yes, it originated in New York and they are one of the most popular New York style pizzas that you can find in New York and they are expanding here to the west. Mmm, wow, so crunchy. A little thicker than your usual like Neapolitan pizza. So it's not exactly like a Chicago or Detroit style pizza either. This is its own thing. But this is something that you should eat if you love pepperoni because you got so much fresh pepperoni on top. And these are kind of like the circle cup-like pepperonis where you have some oil inside. Mm-hmm. So if you come with a group, definitely get the pie. Get it fresh because this is a really tasty pepperoni pizza. The other end of the spectrum, so if you guys like more of the cheese flavor, oh yeah, this is the one you gotta get. Oh, I like that one. Now I feel like I'm eating a cheese bread. So no tomato sauce on this one. This one is if you really like just a simple cheese with all of its different uh, cheesy taste going on because there's four kinds of cheese on it. Pretty rich tasting. You know, I was originally gonna get the Meat Lovers Pizza, but then when I heard about this one, I was like, okay, maybe I'll try it. I'm so glad I did. This is such a good item. You just totally get it. So if you guys want pizza, I guess this is a spot to come to. So it's like a very particular type of pizza, you know, with this Sicilian style, but it's very good because you don't find pizzas like this in many places, let me tell you. So you should be very glad when you see New Yorkers opening up stuff like this here in Vegas. All right guys, so this is Wayne right here. Look out for him at Prince Street, Las Vegas. Oh yeah. This food hall got pretty busy. See, it's very popular here. Lunchtime rolls around, everybody storms in here. All right, now I'm gonna try some Italian food. They got a really hot pasta spot called Fiorella Pasta, which I heard is pretty mind blowing. So it looks like Fiorella is kind of like its own sit down restaurant. They got a lot of indoor seating, including this counter. So yes, it is like a pasta bar where you can watch them make the pasta. Open kitchen, and that is their specialty, fresh made pasta. They got a nice little menu, so it makes ordering very easy. 
And then the pasta, I heard their rigatoni is like their best seller, so definitely gonna get that. And then, uh, yeah, I'll choose one more. And if you need your cocktails and wines, they do have it here as well. So yes, you can get drinks and pasta. So I think this pasta takes about uh, seven or eight minutes to cook. Yep, so after the pasta cooks, you gotta mix it in with the sauce. So this one, I believe is the rigatoni. So if there's any appetizer to get, it is the crab toast. So this one has brown butter on top of the crab with lemon, you got herbs, and then the bottom is focaccia. So this one is made fresh every day, house-made focaccia, $6 per batch. I had to try it because I love focaccia. I can officially say that this is the biggest, fluffiest focaccia bread I've ever seen. Have you ever seen it this thick before? I don't think this is a typical focaccia, but still it has a wonderful taste. Like a very fluffy, spongy interior. No complaints. Always a good way to start Italian meals. You gotta be careful, it just falls right off. That brown butter really makes all the difference in this. Gives it more of like a buttery, richer taste. And they use Dungeness crab in here. There are no skimping around on quality. Dungeness crab is expensive. So if in case you're wondering why they charge $18 for this toast, they're using really good crab. So this is their most popular pasta dish. This is the rigatoni. Oh yeah, smells so good. I can smell that cheese. It's a Fiorella sausage ragu. All right, superstar dish right here. So excited, haven't had a nice rigatoni in a long time. Mm. Oh, that pasta is so good. Yeah, you can tell they fresh make their pastas here. That's like a beautiful chewiness to this whole thing. It's like a very ragu tasting sauce. I really like that ragu flavor, you know, like the meat and the tomato. So if you guys are into meat sauces, you know, with that tomato flavor, then obviously the ragu is the one you gotta get. And this is the other popular pasta dish, the tagliolini. This has a lemon butter sauce over it. Looks so creamy. We got poppy seed and some nice prosciutto on top. This one is not a tomato based sauce. Yeah, so this one is more if you're into like creamy. Oh yeah, like that lemon butter creaminess. I would say that the flavor of this one is a little bit less intense. So you get kind of like that subtle, lemony, creamy flavor. But then the prosciutto is what kind of adds like that meat saltiness to it. Okay, me personally, between these two, I'm just more this type of a person. So, you know, I like this one better. But this one in itself, still marvelous flavor. See what I tell you, they have a little bit of everything here. But it gets even fancier yeah. than that, because I'm gonna show you some great stuff coming yeah. up in just a bit. All right guys, this is Kanye. Look out for him, Director of Operations at Fiorella. Really good stuff. And I cannot leave here without trying some Asian food as well. They got it here, Shang Artisan Noodle. If you guys remember, I was at the original location last year, and they opened up a new spot here. This is exciting news. Okay, well the menu looks very similar to the original one. Yeah, maybe I'll get one of their noodles, obviously, and an appetizer. You see, there's quite a bit that you can choose from. Pretty nice. They got two types of noodles here. So you got your hand-pulled noodles, and then you also have this other knife-shaped noodles. Both of them are good in their own ways. One of the great things about Shang Artisan Noodles is that they hand make their noodles on site, even here at Eat Your Heart Out. So yeah, you can watch them making it back here where they're stretching the noodles and then boiling it and dressing it up afterwards. And they do have indoor seating here as well. So if you guys had to get one noodle dish on the menu, especially if you like soup, then you should get Shung beef noodles. So you could get a mild or spicy. This is made of beef and chicken broth. All right, braised beef brisket, veggies, green onions. So the pork and cabbage pot stickers, you gotta get this. This is like so good. Minced pork, cabbage, green onions. You better get here early or make reservations because even at this location in this food hall, it's so packed. There's already people waiting, putting their names down on the wait list. Yeah, even this location is very popular too. 
you see that flaky layer that's all on top? Very crusty, right? Yeah, they have a special way of making this to make it taste like this. Skin tastes really good. Fillings, so much meat fillings. And they have the signature dipping sauce, which is kind of like a vinegary, spicy, and sweet at the same time. Interesting, okay. Famous beef noodle soup. Yeah, so I got mine spicy today just to see how this would taste like. Yeah, spicy is the way to go. Oh man. Don't be afraid. I mean, the color look, kind of looks like brown red color. It's not going to kill you. It's actually manageable. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, that's a very good beef broth. Oh, delicious. Oh, very good noodles. You know, fresh made noodles, there's always a really pleasant taste to it that you don't find with, you know, packaged instant noodles, right? Mm hmm And of course, they're gonna pack it on with so much of this beef. Wow, that beef is so, this is like such comfort food, I'm telling you. Almost like mom's home cooking. This actually almost tastes like my dad's recipe. Yeah, he actually likes it really spicy, so he would actually like this one. Okay, this is something I did not have last time, so I'm gonna change it up a little bit. Yangzhou fried rice, which is uh, fried rice basically with shrimp, ham, scrambled eggs, veggies, and green onion. Mm, this fried rice has ham in it. Kind of tastes like it would be more home style. You know, when you use like leftover ham and even put pieces of corn in there. It's not as salty as some of the ones that I've had at some of the other restaurants. I would say this is more of like a milder flavored fried rice. But hey, if you're health conscious, maybe that could be a very good thing. All right guys, Daniel, he's an awesome staff here at Shang Artisan Noodle. Look out for him. And right next to Shang Artisan Noodle is a fancy sushi restaurant. You or me sushi. You know I always love sushi, right? Well, their menu looks pretty good, right? You got your appetizers and everything looks so good on the appetizer section. Really awesome. See, they got the carpaccio, tuna tataki. And then on this side, we got our chef's special. Like I heard that the sizzling wasabi steak is super killer, so I'm gonna get that here. But then this is what you come here for. You see, you could get the YOM sushi, ranging from the classic, so I'm assuming that's like their smallest size, to something like the ultimate for 229. Ooh, you think I should get that one? Wow, look at that huge sushi platter. This is pretty insane. This is not your typical food court sushi like you would find in a Westfield mall. This is fancy stuff. Just like you were to walk into any like award-winning, possibly Michelin star restaurant. Yeah, you're gonna find this here at Eat Your Heart Out. Oh, wow. Woo. All right, so that's their sizzling wasabi demi-gyu kaku, which is 12 ounce New York strip steak and kizami wasabi demi. This is the biggest attraction on the menu. So this is the YOM ultimate selection. You got eight pieces of nigiri plus 20 pieces of sashimi and chef's choice roll. So it looks like today's chef's choice is the truffle hamachi roll. That sounds super fancy, I'll take it. Let me see if I can name all this. So we got tuna, yellowtail, salmon, golden eye snapper, and looks like a repeat. Then we have the sweet shrimp head right there. And let's see, that's Toro with the gold truffle flakes on top. Hamachi, which is yellowtail. Bluefin tuna with some caviar on top. And some salmon eggs. Golden ice snapper kind of buried in there. We got some, uh, let's see, salmon. And then that is the, the uh, amaebi, sweet shrimp itself. You see how fancy this can get? Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. Tastes good. I mean, truffle oil makes anything taste good. I want to try my steak too. See, it's, it's very nice and peppery on top. Can you see it? Oh yeah. So I cooked mine to about medium rare, which is the good way to cook it. Delicious. 
Even I'm at a sushi restaurant, I still like to get steak. I mean, this is really one of the most popular things here, so why not? Back to my big platter. Wow, I feel like this is like a sushi Disneyland going on here. Woo! Mm. Very clean tasting tuna. It's good. As much as I like tuna, I'm a yellowtail type of a person. Unless we're talking about like Toro. I love the taste of yellowtail. You know, like that rich yellowtail flavor. Can't go wrong with it. I can't forget about the sashimi. Look at that golden eye snapper sashimi. Ooh, I like that one. Definitely fresh. You see that fish right there? That's, that's not a prop. This is a real fish right here. So they took some meat out of this, which I think is the golden eye snapper meat. Yeah, I think so. Sweet shrimp, all right. Always good stuff too, right? That's fresh too. You see, they're so nice to even give you this fried head too, which I think is my favorite part. You gotta have the crunchiness of that to really balance this whole thing out. Oh yeah, look, that's a piece of Toro right there with the gold flakes on it. That's like the prettiest sushi on this thing. Richest, most buttery Toro I've had, at least here in Vegas. Oh yeah, that definitely makes this whole thing. I mean, of course, it's not like eating sushi from one of those really nice omakase restaurants. But for something like here at Durango, it's like way past your expectations, exceeds your expectations. I mean, it just shows you can have so much fun here at this food court at Durango. Hi guys, this is Chef John. Yeah, executive chef. Look out for him at You or Me Sushi. That is a heavy meal, so that's why I have to kind of take it easy for my next spot. Get some coffee at Vesta Coffee. Everybody loves coffee, right? Hot and cold coffee, everything from lattes to even popular stuff like Camp S'more Latte, which I think I'm gonna get because I heard it's super popular. You can also get sandwiches and toast. Uh, I think I'm gonna skip on this. I'm so full right now, but you can if you want. And be sure to check on the website in the video description link for the hours because every restaurant, drink, food shop has different business hours. So you wanna make sure that if you show up here and you wanna to go to your favorite spot that they're gonna be open at a certain time. This is the miso cream danish, one of their popular ones for $6. I heard this is very good. And this one is the seasonal brioche for $9. It has some sort of like a almond paste, jam, and lots of pecans on top. There is a common seating everywhere, so don't worry about having to sit. I mean, I guess you can always go into the casino and sit somewhere, right? Wow, this s'more latte is, is pretty good. And the good thing is it's not super sweet either. I think it's good that they kind of start on a low intensity of sweetness. You can always add sugar, but you can't really take away sugar, right? And if you have coffee, you should have something like uh, Danish, right? I really like that cheese in the center. Almost feels like eating a cheesecake Danish, kind of. Quite honestly, I'm not really the biggest fan of Danishes, but if you have something that's like a cream cheese like this in the center, then it adds a lot of flavor to the Danish. And yeah, I can totally go for it. Wow, that brioche is pretty amazing. The brioche is very warm. That jam, that paste that's over it, you know, the sweet almond flavor is really good. We got some pecans on top some of these crumbs as well this is one is the one you definitely got to get yeah look for this one this one and get some of your latte you're good to go when you're here you're definitely going to eat your heart out because this is some of the grandest food hall food that you're going to find anywhere so remember that here at durango casino later that night i headed north to the jw marriott resort where a hidden gem spot lies marketplace buffet this is probably the only AYC buffet you'll find in the Summerlin area. Thursday nights is the time to go because they have all-you-can-eat prime rib and beef ribs. 
This is the definition of a Vegas style buffet, so I say it's definitely worth checking out. Tonight it's $31.99 a person. You do want to check on the website because the prices are different depending on when you come and there's always going to be different menu items. But for tonight, I'm going to be feasting on the prime rib, the seafood. All right guys, this is Chef Lalo. He's a sous chef here at Marketplace Buffet. He's going to explain to us everything that's up here. So today we'll be starting at the Global Station. First of all, we have a short ribs, short pepper short ribs with uh, peppers and onions. Off we have the um, classic uh, udon noodles with some shrimp. We have a classic dish, uh, the Kung Pao chicken. All right, this is Kung Pao chicken? Yes, sir. It has the uh, mushrooms, peanuts, um, corn, mushrooms. Okay. Watercress. Cool. cool. Um, bok choy. It's uh, one of our veggies for the day that we, that we put out. And then our vegetable fried rice. Ooh, wow. That looks delicious. And what's that? Oh, this is just our, our steamed rice. Okay, you got another sure. kind of rice here too. Sure. So yeah, we got a wide selection of uh, buffalo uh, buffalo wings, barbecue. That's barbecue? Sir, sweet chili. Sweet chili. We got some egg rolls, fried egg rolls, plain wings, and a ve vegetable pot sticker. So this is the egg drop, and then what was that? The uh, hot and sour soup. Oh yeah, yeah, this is very Asian, this section. With our pesto pasta, pesto chicken pasta, the penne. We here with our mac and cheese with our orchette pasta. We have our clams with spaghetti and our Swedish meatballs. Oh yeah, I haven't had these since I went to Ikea. We're at the Euro station uh, with our cold uh, section. It's a pasta salad with uh, cherry tomatoes and basil. Over here we have a garbanzo salad. Garbanzo beans, right? Garbanzo beans with a top of feta cheese. It has tomato, onion, cucumbers. Over here we have our antipesto salad. Okay, what is uh, that? Um, it's like a, it's a salami with uh, olives, artichoke, uh, roasted uh, tomatoes, and then our Greek salad. Greek salad, yes. yes On this side, um, we have our seafood chipino. This is the seafood chipino? Yes, sir. Uh, shrimp, crawfish, mussels. Uh, we here have our citric glazed salmon. Oh, that looks good. It's uh, the jalapeno poppers, mozzarella sticks, marinara sauce. And pretzels. All right, so that's the marinara and that's the pretzels, right? Okay, so that's the vegetable pizza spinach, looks like. Tomatoes, onions, peppers, mm. and this one is our cheese. Cheese pizza. All and right, very our simple. Barbecue chicken. And barbecue chicken. Yes, sir. Ooh. On this side we have our charcuterie board. Mm. Many different uh, types of cheese and meats. All right, so we're at a new section. Yeah, we're at the farm stand uh, salad section. Broccoli cheddar soup. Okay, broccoli cheddar. Nice. And we're uh, our French onion soup. And today we have a cheese sauce for nachos, pretzels, whatever you like. Wait, so you're supposed to take this and use it with that? Yes. These are uh, cheddar rolls. Mm-hmm. All right. There's some sourdough rolls and some pretzel rolls. We have our mini uh, BLT salads. These are individually portioned salads. All right. Our beet salad. Beet salad? Yes, sir. Okay, what kind of cheese is that? Uh, goat cheese. Uh-huh. Balsamic glaze. All right. That's our great. coleslaw. Coleslaw. And our classic Caesar. Some dressings, we have Italian dressing, Thousand Island dressing, blue cheese. This one? Yes, sir. Okay. Your French dressing. Uh, peppers, sweet peppers. peppers. Okay. Sweet peppers. Ranch. Ranch. Black beans, mm. blue cheese crumbles, artichoke hearts, uh, black olives, garbanzo beans, and kidney beans. Excellent. Those are red onions. Red onions, cheddar cheese, cherry tomatoes. Oh, they're so big. <laughs> and some uh, bacon mm -hmm. and cucumbers. And this is like a make, build your own salad station. So we have uh, spinach, uh, romaine mix, and our spring mix. So this is basically like shrimp, right? Yes, That's sir. Okay, you peel it and eat it simple. Our cocktail sauce, lemon slices, uh, pineapple, watermelon, honeydew melon, and cantaloupe. So over here we have our carvery and rotisserie. 
Over here we have our fried chicken. We do it daily. Rosemary glazed pork chops. Our battered cod this is one of our veggies. Grilled broccolini. Oh, they were filling it. Potatoes and gravy. This is the gravy? Yes, sir. Ooh, so liquidy. Okay. Our baby carrots. Oh, so you got hot dogs and the beef burger patties. Yes, sir. All right, and then you even have- Sorry, garlic parm fries. Okay, so that's the hot dog and this is the- uh, uh, Brioche buns. This is our carvery section. We have our rotisserie chicken. You can actually get the whole chicken like that? Mm, yeah, you can ask for it. Okay, sure. all right, well, this is a buffet after all. <laughs> and there's our uh, turkey whole breast. Oh, right. Our herb turkey and then our prime. Prime rib. This is the prime rib right here? Yes, sir. All and right. Our beef ribs. Beef ribs. And then our bratwurst for carvery. Which one? Our bratwurst. Oh, this one? Yes, sir. All right, with all of these jalapenos, peppers. peppers. Okay, and this is like... Uh, uh, aju. Aju. Yes, for the prime Fried rib. Prime rib. Here we go, round number one. Fried chicken fan, so of course I'm gonna get it. Now here's something I don't see that often in buffets. Okay, battered cod. Oh yeah, look at that prime rib. This is prime rib night, uh-huh. I would say this is kind of like a medium, large size buffet. It's not the biggest one I've been to in town, but they still do have quite a number of options here. And just like with any other buffets, be a wise eater, especially if you don't have too much stomach space, so you gotta focus on a lot of the good food. But I did get some vegetables because I need it. Haven't had too much on this trip. You guys like broccolini? To me, it's like the way to go. Tastes really good, you know, with that oily, smoky flavor. If you're not into veggies, of course, you can always do your fried chicken. Very fresh tasting fried chicken. Of course, not like eating at Popeyes or KFC, but still very enjoyable. Since I came here right when they opened, that means everything up there is pretty fresh. Good time to come, right? Not a typical buffet choice for me, but I do like fried fish, so I'm gonna try it. That crispiness is on point. Okay, if you get the batter fish there, they're gonna be pretty safe. It's pretty enjoyable, actually. Even that white fish inside, nice and soft. Now here's something I didn't expect here. They have these big beef ribs as well. Oh yeah, not as big as the one I had at Rolling Smoke the other day, but I'll still take it. Why not? You gotta get your money's worth, right? The only thing that I wish it were was fall right off the bone. You know what I'm talking about? So this, you have to kind of chew a little bit and rip it off the bone. But flavor-wise, it's pretty good. Like it has like that smoky flavor, the seasoning, very tasty, you know, that peppery seasoning. So this has like a very charred barbecue taste. So if you like that, all you can eat, you can get plenty of these. Here's what I came for, the prime rib. I haven't had prime rib in quite a long time. Okay, not bad. Okay, that's a really solid prime rib. I mean, I can't say it's like on the level of eating at Laurie's prime rib, but for a buffet prime rib, it definitely hits the spot. I don't eat prime rib that often, and honestly, it's not my choice of beef because I'm more of a, uh, like a steak type of person, but I still enjoy a good prime rib from time to time. If I see it in a buffet line, of course I'm gonna get it. After all, it is prime rib night, Oh, I just love those mashed potatoes. It's like so runny. I feel this is like a really classic American buffet meal. Kind of like the ones they had back in the 80s and 90s too. Oh, it brings back good memories. Oh, the buffet cannot finish at round one, right? Maybe I'll try some of that seafood chipino. After all, you gotta try some seafood, right? As well as some of that citrus glazed salmon. As you get deeper into the night, this buffet is going to get busier. So if you can, try to come right when they open. Wow, such a good snack. Probably been sitting there for a little while, so that's why it's just a little bit dry, but it pretty much has like that pretzel taste to it. Almost like what you would find if you were to walk around a mall. 
you know, they sell those pretzel snacks. Okay, but here's where you really want to focus your attention on, like the seafood, the chipino. Whoa, back muscles, not bad. Okay, let me try another one. Not bad at all. It's a little bit spicy too, that chipino. Wow, you see, it comes with some shrimp as well in the chipino. It's actually a little spicier than I thought. Wow. Okay, well, if you like your chipino kind of spicy, then yeah, I think you're gonna be happy with that chipino. I do taste that citrusy flavor that glaze on top. Salmon, I think, could be a little softer. I mean, it's not the best one I've had in a buffet, but salmon's healthy, so I get it all the time. They got the little shrimp cocktail too, right? Your peel yourself shrimp. Yeah, make sure you get the cocktail sauce, otherwise it's gonna be kind of bland. I think the shrimp could be bigger, but you know, if you guys really like shrimp cocktail, I guess it doesn't matter the size, you can just get whatever you want, right? Back again to some healthy stuff, the garbanzo beans. I feel the vegetable dishes like the garbanzo salad is always a safe bet at these restaurants. Like if the meat or the seafood is not that great at buffets, like you can have the salad, the veggies. A lot of the times it's actually very good. All right, right now we're at the sweet shop. This is our chocolate uh, cream pie, our cheesecake. All right, individually portioned. Our pecan pie. Carrot cake, chocolate chip cookies. All right, so we do a uh, sorry cheesecake. We have cream puffs. We have different flavors of uh, roladas. What is this kind of like cake? Yes, sir. All right, it looks like you got raspberry, raspberry lemon, and chocolate. And chocolate. Okay, take your pick, guys. <laughs> we have our fruit tarts. Okay. This is our cherry sticky pudding. What is this magic bar made out of? It's made of a lot of things. It's made of uh, marshmallow, peanuts, chocolate, coconut flakes, then okay. our cake pops. And then uh, we have different types of uh, cupcakes, chocolate and vanilla. We have our custard pie, blueberry pie, apple pie. This is the German chocolate cake? Yes, sir. Okay, it's untouched. Nobody's <laughs> touched it yet. And then uh, our cookie section, we have our double, uh, double chocolate cookies. Our sugar cookies. These are brownies. Oatmeal raisin cookies. And peanut butter cookies. Our uh, caramel sauce for our bread pudding. This one? Yes, sir. Bread pudding, apple cobbler. And cinnamon sugar churros. So over here we have our soft serve ice cream. Vanilla or chocolate. So this is the vanilla and the chocolate, right? Okay, and you can get like a mix. And then you get the mix if, if you like both. Okay, is this the cone that you use? Yes, sir. All right. You can either have it in a cone or in a cup. <laughs> I see there's more over here, ice cream. So our gelatos, so first uh, we have our chocolate uh, NSA, sugar-free. We have our mango sorbet. We have our salted caramel. Our raspberry gelato. It's uh, another mango. Uh, Spumoni gelato, mint chip, uh, butter pecan, and then pistachio gelato. Now on this side we have all, all of our toppings, we have our whipped cream, M&M's, Oreos, chocolate sauce, and strawberry syrup. All right. And our sprinkles. Yep, can't forget the sprinkles. You can even do a buffet out of the dessert section. I'm not gonna try all of it tonight because I'm getting really full, but if you want my opinion on what foods you should get from the hot food section, for sure, like the prime rib, uh, beef ribs, even the fried chicken is not too bad either. So yeah, I would say those are the ones you should really focus your attention on. But what about stuff like this cake pop? What is like a brownie or? Okay, not bad. Has a very chocolatey taste. I like chocolate. Like I said, first time at this buffet at JW Marriott. 
It's not the best buffet I've ever been to, but it's also not the worst buffet I've ever been to. I mean, $32, pretty reasonably priced, got free parking out there. Uh, neighborhood is very nice. This resort is pretty nice as well. I think you're gonna like it, especially if you like very all-American buffet food. Yeah, this is your spot. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this mega tour of the Las Vegas food scene. So next time you make a trip out to Las Vegas, come with a big appetite and enjoy all the foods that Vegas has to offer.